Sheffield United go top. West Brom hit five. There's a crazy Lancashire derby. And Reading and Borough seem to be in the opposite positions I expected them to be in. Here is our round five championship review. Busy week in the championship with our first midweek round. We normally get one or other, but nobody did three wins and nobody did three defeats. Let's start as ever at the top. Sheffield United 3, Blackburn Rovers nil. The Blades go top and are the only two points per game in the division after five rounds. Their brilliant home record rolls on from the end of last season. Three wins from three at Bramall Lane to begin this campaign. Blackburn, who were top after winning their first three, have now lost two in a row. A couple of worldies in this one. Ollie Norwood with a beautifully curled right-footed three kick into the far corner on 31. Illiman and Dai is going to come off the bench to add numbers two and three in the second half. He's a bit lucky as Sander Berger's shot pretty much hits him on the way to goal and diverts into the opposite corner for his first. No luck whatsoever on his second. Superb dribble down the pitch and finish left footy. We saw him do this last season down at Fulham. You can see me getting very excited about that goal here. Blades nice and strong following that opening day defeat at Watford. Team bedding down nicely. Maybe and Dai is solving the scoring issue. They still need something out of Brewster and or McBurney. Blackburn, look, I tried not to get too carried away when they won three in a row, so I won't get too carried away negatively now that they've lost two. Early days still for Jean Dahl Thomason. Preston, nil. Watford, nil. OK, this is getting ridiculous now. Preston still have not conceded a goal. Yes, they've drawn four of their five games, nil, nil. But it is completely factual and fair of me to say that Preston, so far this season, have been impossible to score past in the Championship. As we suggested from a Watford point of view, the Saar, Dennis and João Pedro front three at Championship level is going to turn out to be a very brief dalliance to speculation rolls on, watch this space on those two players that are still on the books at Watford as I speak right now. Obviously, Preston's amazing defence and these nil-nils mean they also have a bit of a goal-scoring issue. They're undefeated and it could well be a good basis to build on if they can start sticking the ball in the back of the net. Speaking of a good basis to build on, that is exactly what Rob Edwards has given Watford. And I have to say, given all the speculation, transfer, business, chaos, the fact that they're undefeated and second in the table has to be a thumbs up from the Hornets' point of view. Reading 1, Middlesbrough nil. As I said in my intro, I'm quite surprised about where these two are after five games. So with that being said, superb work by Paul Lintz at Reading to have them in third and with a magnificent home record three wins out of three where Reading have scored all of their points so far. Borough, really poor start. Much was expected, lots of optimism about Chris Wilder, but no wins in five and only Coventry are worse than Borough and they've only played twice so far. Tyrese Fauna drilled home the only goal in this one from distance inside the half hour mark. Reading won this game with 27% possession and 0.37 XG. To that, I say good work from Reading, but from a Borough point of view, it's the same issues we've spoken about for the longest time and I'll keep thinking it's going to change and perhaps Rodrigo Muniz arriving on loan this morning, partnered with Marcus Force, will finally get their goal scoring going. Anyway, look, let's end on Reading. They're the good news story. Brilliant start. And that home record being what it is, is a real basis to build a decent points total on for Reading this season. Stoke nil, Sunderland one. I had a hunch for Sunderland in this one. Was impressed seeing them in the flesh at Sheffield United in midweek. And what might have been in that game had they not got a red card in the first half. This one looks like a bit of a snatch one on the break type away win, which will frustrate the Stoke fans as their boys racked up nearly 60% possession and 15 shots on their way to a first home defeat of the season. A perfectly timed goal for Sunderland in first half stoppage time from Ross Stewart. 
He gets played in by Clark. Third of the season from Stewart, picking up where he left off last season. Could Bursic in goal have been a little bit stronger in the face of that shot? These two very much carrying on where they left last season. Stoke, unconvincing. They've got the look of not the finished product, which they've had for a few years, quite frankly. Sunderland, still well drilled and in a very good place momentum-wise. They get the win. West Brom 5, Hull City 2. Of the teams in our playing well but not converting their chances mode, West Brom most emphatically put things right by banging in five past Hull this round. The Baggies, let's be honest, have been a bit hapless in terms of their conversion thus far this season. They certainly weren't this weekend. A far cry from the game I saw where they created chance after chance after chance and didn't beat Watford a couple of weeks back. It did take an own goal to uncork the bottle and get things going. Callum Elder in the first half, the unlucky man. A couple of lovely finishes, though, to start the second half. We expect John Swift to be capable of this type of thing, but Darnell Furlong, hey, better known for his long throws than drilling shots in from outside of the box. Carlin Grant made it 4-0 from the penalty spot with the game well and truly getting away from Hull, who did have a bright spark in Oscar Estupinian. He made it 4-1, showing as we saw from the YouTube clips when we were researching him. If you give him service, he will work that penalty box well. Before Estu is going to get his second, the Baggies get themselves a fifth, though. O'Shea popping up from a Phillips cross. Estu Pinion showed great strength and balance to get his second, and he's now out on his own in the goal-scoring stakes with four so far. But... This isn't about him. It's about West Brom finally clicking in a scoring and an attacking sense. And finally, for Steve Bruce, getting a first win of the season. Long time coming. Hull, I'll give them a pass given their strong start prior to this. But the Hull fans are not going to want to see any more collections of five flying into their net in the immediate future. Amazing at support and engagement for the channel this season. So far, please Help me out, hit that like button and help things continue to head in the right direction. Bristol City 2, Cardiff 0. Bristol City continue their good run in the seven-side derby fixtures and put in a strong performance to take this one 2-0 and score themselves back-to-back -back home wins and shoot themselves up towards the playoff region of the table. Conway opens to score in lovely angled header for his second of the season. Atkinson in the second half nods home the second goal and we saw plenty of this from Cal Naismith in Luton's playoff run last season. Beautiful left-footed delivery on a plate for the big centre half. Bristol City excellent two games and most importantly are the two clean sheets so I can't sit here and run the flaky argument if they're going to keep up this level of solidity. For Cardiff, they drop into the mid-table and I'm still a little bit concerned about the relative lack of chances that they are making across the season. Bottom three for XG created in the first five for Steve Morrison. Norwich 2, Millwall nil. Hopefully you've watched already, but I covered this game in person for the channel on Friday night. So to hear my take, click here to see the vlog, but only if you promise to come right back here for the rest of the review. Burnley 3, Blackpool 3. Wow, get yourself comfortable. What a game. Six goals, two red cards. Blackpool overcoming a two-goal deficit to take a point. Burnley were in the same club as West Brom in terms of nice underlying numbers, but the win's not coming. Look, we can give them a tick for better chance conversion this week, but... They did not stick a W on the board against a stubborn, full of fight Blackpool. The watchword has been possession under Vincent Company, but there was a great sense of directness actually as they raced into a two goal lead within 11 minutes. Bish bash bosh, layoff. Josh Brownhill smashes this one into the top corner. He's been away and returns to the championship looking rather ready to boss it, um, according to my eye test. Teller in on loan from Southampton. First start, first goal. And again, Harwood Bellis this time. They find the killer ball back to front. Nice and direct, nice and effective. 
It comes to bad side of Burnley though. And they let Blackpool back into the game, trying to build out from the back, getting caught out by Corbino to make it 2-1. Changes the feel of the game. So, does Nathan Teller though. He puts the Clarets back 3-1 up. Four goals, all in the first 33 minutes. Fair dues though to Blackpool, who got back into it in the second half. They get back to 3-2. Shane Lavery on 74 minutes. And... Strike well, the iron is hot. Two minutes later, Jerry Yates brings things back level, all square in front of a pretty epic looking away end there behind the goal. Kerry and Martson got themselves red carded in the same instance, meaning both sides finished with 10 men. Burnley, same story really, isn't it? Although this time they got over one goal in the game for the first time, the win still did not come. Feast or famine at the moment for Burnley. It's either going to click or it isn't. Watch this space. Blackpool, very positive. They've taken four points from two away games. Good work from Michael Appleton, who's working very hard at the moment to stop the likes of me from keep mentioning the great work by the previous manager and building his own side. QPR 1, Rotherham 1. Rotherham continue their excellent start after promotion from League 1. Four played... And no defeats thus far, as well as temporarily silencing my suggestions that I might struggle on the road. Two trips this week, two draws. Good work. Can they put a victory on the board and start building points away from the New York Stadium? Ogbene opens the scoring, sweeping up from a set play in this one. That's three for the season. He's scored half of Rotherham's goals thus far. Um, QPR a little underwhelming so far. The same can't be said for Chris Willock, who got the equaliser. He's appeared twice this season and scored twice. Ours fans will be very pleased to see him combining with Ilias Chair. Those two have often been the ticket, let's just say, creativity-wise for QPR. Numbers say that Rangers were probably slightly more likely to go on and win, but they didn't. The game ends in a draw. Rotherham, you would have thought, would be the happier fan base of these two clubs at this juncture. Birmingham nil, Wigan won. Now I wondered in the prediction show whether Wigan's midweek off would see them rested or rusty. Well, they answered me pretty emphatically here with some more of these momentum being shown from these League One promoted teams. Bit of a heroic one, you'd have to say, from the Latics this one, as they went down to 10 men after just 10 minutes of this game. Bennett red carded denial of obvious goal scoring opportunity. They hung in there and when the chance came for Wigan they took it white with a nice little angled ball in and the recently arrived Broadhead drilled home to pinch the points. Bit of a disappointing one for Blues. It looked nice and durable in these opening games especially at home but given that red card the accolade of durable has surely got to go to Wigan in this one who remain undefeated and like the others promoted last season are doing League One proud in the opening rounds. Swansea nil, Luton 2. Another hunch I had this round turned out to have some validity. Look, don't, don't worry, I got plenty wrong as well. But I got this one right and Luton desperately needed a win after their poor start to the season. This one played out exactly the way I'd imagined and probably the way Swansea fans would have feared in worst case scenario land there. Luton nicked a goal on 14 after Campbell very decisively punished a rather indecisively dealt with set play from Swansea. The Hatters then happily surrendered 75% possession. They brought Carlton Morris in on the hour mark and then proceeded to pick Swansea off for a second goal. Morris step over, shift it left and finish into the bottom corner. Very much borrowed from the original Ronaldo's playbook to make it 2-0. Luton, well, they get exactly what they needed. They play league leaders Sheffield United on Friday. I will be there. Look out for the blog. They're going to hope that's going to kick start their season. Swansea are very much still in the Burnley boat, which we're not including West Brom in anymore. They're second to the Clarets for possession, top for pass completion, but it's just not translating into high quality chances and goals. And this story rumbles on at Swansea. Coventry versus Huddersfield. 
Well, this one was postponed. We're expecting some movement on Coventry's pitch very, very soon. But another one cancelled means planned opponents Huddersfield are now a game behind, while the Sky Blues are three behind schedule. Here is the league table after five games. Sheffield United move top. Watford, Reading and Blackburn all tucked in behind them on nine points. Sunderland and Hull make up the top six. At the bottom is Coventry, although we can obviously put that down to their lack of games. And then an underperforming Middlesbrough side, second bottom as things stand. Huddersfield make up the relegation zone. Get involved with your takes on what went down this round below in the comments. I'll put up the polls for team and goal of the round after we've uploaded this. Look out for them and get voting. But for God's sake, remember, please leave your bias at the door. Best predictions of the season so far for me going into this round. So I'll have a bit more pride in saying click here to see what I forecast ahead of this round. And things are moving very, very fast in the championship. If you want to get completely caught up, here is our playlist of every review show so far this season.